Hey class, um, today you are going to work on regression. And some of you guys have seen this before, some of you guys, you guys have all seen it before some way, in some form, some fashion. But this time we're just going to make sure we do it the advanced function way, which is kind of not that hard or anything. So with it, we're going to start off with a thing called line of best fit, and that same thing as regression. And we're going to deal with it with quadratic, cubic, um, uh, linear, exponential, and logarithm. And also, you see another comma there because we actually end up later on this semester going through um, more exponential and more log functions. We go through um, power functions. We also go through sine and cosine functions also. So with all of that, this is not just it. We hit this and that's over. We come back to this throughout the rest of the semester at times, just at random times. So it's one of those things that you're going to have to remember it. But also, you were given, or you should have this form, this also, should have this here, the keystrokes um, page that I'm giving you each and every one of you guys. Because this, again, is if you ever forget how to do it, this is in your notes to so go back to it and remember how to hit the buttons and everything. And I give you every single keystroke that you need right here. So with that, make sure that you keep those this keystroke page and make sure you have all this and know how to use it because you're just hitting buttons and getting the answers. So the great thing about regression is that it kind of tells you like what's happening in the future or you can figure out what they give you from the table they give you, the information from the past. You can predict what's going to happen in the future. So that's what this whole regression thing is really about is taking the information you have and you predict the future. So with this, we come to example one. And everybody should have a packet with all this too. So you're not writing anything down, but you should be like writing stuff on to on here as you're filling things in. So with this, the first thing, for example, one, we start off with a definition. So the first thing here is quadratic regression. That's another vocabulary word. And remember, that's on our word wall. That's going to be on our word wall if it's not already there. Um, so it's one of those things that you're going to have to know when those words you're going to have to know when it comes to your vocabulary quiz later on. So here. The quadratic regression is just a process by which the equation of a parabola is found that best fits a given set of data. Now, when it comes to vocabulary quizzes, you should know that there are key terms for definitions. So the biggest part that you need to know and as key terms is the word equate uh, parabola and best fits. So if you see parabola and best fits on a word on a, um, a vocabulary quiz and they want you to tell them what the word is it's quadratic regression so again the whole thing is a definition but this is your keywords parabola and best fits okay so let's move on now. let's keep going on so it says let's look at the an example of a quadratic regression so we're taking a look at again at a quadratic regression so when we do this it's quadratic regression the table below lists a total estimate estimated number of AIDS cases by year of diagnos diagnosis from 1999 to 2003 in the United States. And so they give you the table here and all the great stuff. And here, our approach for this information, we're going to first do number one, plot the data, letting X represent, um, correspond to the year 1998. Then we're going to find the quadratic regression, number two, then we're going to plot the graph, and then we're going to use that um, that graph, that, um, that equation we find, the quadratic regression equation, and we're going to predict what's going to, how many it should have been in 2006. So here, we're going to go by all of this, and if you look at this paper here that I gave you with the keystrokes, everything is actually kind of in order from what we're doing here. So for number one, we're going to start off with doing this part, and we're going to put the numbers in, and this is part two, and then we'll do this is part three, and this is part four down here. So here, the first thing that we're going to do is go and get out your calculator if you don't have it already. We're going to use that calculator, and we're going to put the numbers in and then go from there. So as we're continuing on and we're putting the numbers in, we're following the paper, and the first thing says we're going to hit the stat button and the number one. Again, stat and number one. So this is our stat button, S-T-A-T. -T. We hit that, and we hit number one. All right, now, this part, we just go ahead and fill in the table from what's in this table. We fill in our table here with what's here. But before we do that, we have to make sure we follow what they say on number one. 
So we're letting x correspond with 1998. x equals 1998. x equals 0 for 1998. So if 1998 equals 0, what does 1999 equal? Equals 1. 2000 would be 2. 2001 is 3. 2002 is 4. 2003 is 5. So all you're going to do in this table here, in the calculator, you're going to put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for this first one. And we're going to put in these numbers here for the second column. And again, this is L1. This is L2. So in our calculator, in L1, we're going to put these numbers in. In L2, we're going to put these numbers in. Let's do that part. All right, now you have everything in. Make sure you check your numbers and make sure everything corresponds with each other. If the numbers aren't correct, that's going to throw everything off right later on. So make sure you look at the numbers that are in our table here on the calculator and they match up exactly what's on the table. Again, if not, it's going to throw you completely off. All right, so it says to go ahead and plot all this good stuff. That's pretty much all we need to do. We're just putting the numbers in and we're stopping there. That's number one. That's number one. All right, so then number two says that we're going to go ahead and find the, the quadratic function model or the regression model. So here, we already did number one. So now we're jumping down here. So again, we're doing quadratic regression. So when we do stat, we're going to hit the stat button. We're going to go to the right, and we're going to go to the number five because we're doing quadratic regression, number five there. And then we're going to follow these exactly as it is on the calculator. We're going to follow exactly. And you must follow exactly because if not, it's going to throw you off completely. So here, again, we're going to hit stat, go to the right, hit number five. So at the top, you see quad regression. And then we're going to do the exact same things right here. Do not skip a step because you're like, well, I can hit enter and it works out. So yeah, but again, Follow what I tell you to do because there's a reason for it. Don't do your own thing. So we hit down three times. One, two, three. We hit the VARS button. Go to the right. Go one, two. Then we go down and hit enter. And with that, that gave us an equation right here. And we need to write that equation down. So here for number two. I'm going to write down the equation they gave us at the top of the calculator. So write that ax squared plus bx plus c, writing that part down. And then they give you an a, they give you a b, and they give you a c. So all we're going to do is fill in a, b, and c, and then that's our equation. And we're going to round it two decimal places, two decimal places for each one. That means two places after the decimal. <laughs> Two places after the decimal. So we have y equals, and let's see, 345.14x squared plus, oh, uh, sorry. And that is, the next part is a negative 1,705. So here we do a negative 1,705.66, because that 7 makes that 5 go up to a 6. That 7 right there makes that 5 go up to a 6. Get the x plus 42903.6. Now here I expect you know how to round. So when it comes to these problems, if you don't round correctly, the problem's wrong. So it's not, oh, I got the number in there. If it's not rounded correctly, guys, it's wrong. Even if it's just one number right here is not rounded correctly, the whole thing's wrong. So make sure you round correctly. If I say round to one decimal place, two decimal places, round it correctly. All right, and then that's our equation. That's number two. Okay, now in the next video, we're going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these. I'm going to do three and four.